Welcome everyone to the uh, podcast where we review BTS albums, Generation BTS. Woohoo! And today we're here to talk about face. 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 Yeah, so to intro, I'm Christine, I'm 29, I've been ARMY for a year and nine months, I guess still. With me I've got, we're all in the same room today, excitingly, with me I've got... Hi, I'm Leanne, I'm 34 and I've been ARMY for about 13 months now. And hi, I'm Natasha, I'm 19, I've been ARMY for just over six years. Nice, okay. Love how we count hours and months. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, six years. It's been six years since we started the podcast a year ago. <laughs> Today we're here to react to face. Very exciting. So it's going to be one of our normal special reaction episodes where we don't go super into the lyrics and the meaning, mm. maybe a little bit of the meaning of the music videos because that's been readily available. Someone's done her research. Exactly. <laughs> I've been very enthused by it. We're going to talk through what we had of releases leading up to Jimin's album which was a lot like there was so much content Mm. for this then we will talk a little bit about how we feel about the five songs that he's offered us but first let's talk about some recent events so this is the day friends where (laughs) (laughs) friends is everyone okay is everyone okay yeah we literally just like a couple hours ago had the official photos although there were a million leaks beforehand, which is very sad, of Jungkook's Calvin Klein photo shoot. Wow. Guys, yeah. How are you? Big big day. How are you, Natasha? I know how I'm feeling, but I can't imagine. I am loving it. Don't like the one where he's got a T-shirt on, but loving the rest. (laughs) Yeah, I think the video is my favourite one, where you like, he like swings around with just the jacket on yeah. and he's got his little like ballerina bit waist yeah. out oh, oh it's so small yeah. and his abs are like so fully formed they're like in like a little parcel yeah <laughs> someone, said, someone said it looks like the army logo you know how the BTS logo yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's got army abs so yeah he does, he does he does no, no, he's um, uh, fully committed he's been like abs you know what this is the shape that I need <laughs> <laughs> But then when the pre-teaser, when the teaser came out, um, yeah. we went together and Natasha suddenly just arrived, but you sent us this voice note that was just screaming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and my mum's been here. She's also a JK bias. So she was like, what's happening? What's happening? And I was like, look. <laughs> and then you were just screaming and she was like, I need to see. And then she was like, I don't know how I should feel. <laughs> and I was like, it's okay to feel all the things. <laughs> she was like, being so hot. I was trying to work yesterday, I was trying to work today, and it just didn't happen. I was like, but he's there. If I open my phone for Instagram, <laughs> it's going to be there. So <laughs> actually, that's what I need to do. <laughs> Sorry, employers. But yeah, yeah, he talked about it. He was like, I guess the video's out. I'm a little bit embarrassed. I don't know if he thought that it was the whole video. Mm. It was just by the time he came live, it, it was just a little the teaser, teaser clip where they were like, same time tomorrow. Mm. But obviously all the photos had leaked. So um, he said, I don't I know whether you'd like it. But I, I think you guys will like it. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably fair <laughs> i can't wait to actually see it in a shop because uh on way at uh, economy i saw like a calvin klein i don't like oh look at it and we're on the kendall jenner oh, oh, oh it'll be in the next couple of weeks that they do the stars yeah jenny's then, definitely been in vogue i'd been scrolling on the reels and it was like normally they hit about 500k 600k views and yeah. then jk's was like six million yeah yeah yeah. and i was like oh i'm at least 15 of those yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be good. He yeah, said that he did do Calvin Klein because he, he, we all we know that he always wears them. So he wanted to do it with a brand that he likes and wanted to recommend, yeah. even though he knew it was going to be a bit saucy. Yeah. Risque. Living Risque. all the reels where it's like you see up the belt the little, for it. Yeah, yeah, the little band. Every time your shirt comes up, the reels uh, where it's just like underwear, underwear, underwear. Yeah, underwear. we said in this live, it was like, I, you can look in my underwear. Literally, it's all Calvin Klein. Welcome, look. Yeah. <laughs> We're on our way. Welcome, look. Actually, We're on... I, we do require proof. <laughs> We're on our way, JK. Yeah. Yeah, so it's been a good day. Um, a good day to be talking about Jimin. <laughs> <laughs> Who also exists. And contributed to the shirtless era. He has he been getting naked as well, with, yeah. Uh, German writing. We'll we, get to that. We'll come to that, yeah. Everyone's struggling. <laughs> Everyone's we should, struggling. Uh, be, we're all in this together, guys. So Moment of button. silence for yeah. even the non armies out there. Even just people on the street. Mm-hmm. Like They're mm-hmm. going to be like, wow, who's that guy? We're, we're tripling in size once those ads go up. Exactly, yeah. Which is going to be really annoying for getting tickets. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, everyone's going to be like, oh, shit, this guy's super hot. But actually, he's also amazing. So. <laughs> the most talented man on the planet. What? Yeah, what? I must stand. Have to stand. No choice. Yeah, there'll be a lot more. Baby Hammies. JK Biases. Junk cookers out there. The other couple things that have happened, I don't think we have time to go over everything, but there was a very sweet moment over the weekend <laughs> where we got an OT7 photo, kind of. Um, <laughs> it was actually you. just five of them. But they said that Jimin and Taeyang had just been there, but had to leave 10 minutes earlier. But yeah, they all had dinner. Because Jim seven. came out of the military for after having done 100 days. Aww. And it was very sweet. The beauty of it as well is that all seven of them got together and forgot to take a picture. Mm. It was like this concept that they were just literally hanging out. And then some people left and they were, oh, shit, we're BTS. We should probably... <laughs> We should probably take a picture for all of our 100 million fans worldwide. Oh, two of the guys have already gone. Oh, well, we'll still have to do it. Yeah, they just, and then they we'll just, just put it in the caption. It'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> They'll still die over it, and we did. They just That's forgot. Yeah. They weren't just hanging out. They weren't hanging out to promote or no. keep the fans interested. They were, they were just, just meeting up. Yeah. And Jin only gets a few days out, yeah. and he chose to spend some of that with the boys. Yeah, of course. Very I cried sweet. a little. Yeah. Because also... Once Hobie goes, that might not be possible because mm-hmm. they won't get leave at the same yeah, and there'll be a time. Of, a lot of overlap. Yeah, yeah, so even if Jin's out, Hobie won't be out. And whoever goes in next. Well, we think it's Hobie going in next. No, but after after, after Hobie, Hobie, yeah. As in, like they can't wait until Jin's out to send the next guy. In no, like, no, no, well, they'll be waiting um, forever. Yeah, Yingi has to go this year. After we've seen him. Yeah, after we've after you've spat on him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna spit on him. Well, we're hoping he spits on you, right? Yeah, Spitting yeah, yeah. distance. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to carry around loads of little, like, cotton swabs so that if he spits on me, I can clone him. (laughs) (laughs) Easy, easy. And then he has to marry me. No, I'm just kidding. The clone or the real one? The clone one, yeah, yeah. yeah. They could be the same. They could be the same, yeah, clone. (laughs) Okay, last thing that's happened is Tae's done a big photo shoot for El Korea. He also got a lot of naked. Mm. And they put a flower in his trousers. (laughs) Yeah. Which was... uh, Do you know, I don't even think they did. I think he did. (laughs) You might have done, yeah. It feels very me. No, I'm going to put it in, uh, in my trousers. In my trousers. Yeah. JK has got his Calvin Klein campaign coming out soon. I'm not going to be overshadowed no. by that. I'm he gonna... looks great, though. Like, he's not known as, like, the muscly one, but mm. he looked... Um, he looked ripped. Defined. He yeah, did. he did. And he's a little bit bruised. Yeah, and... in the few of them, though, he was a bit bruised. Which I was a bit like, oh, that's a bit weird. But I guess... Oh, I liked it. They're going for, like, the bad boy. Like, bad boy. Yeah. He does, he's not a bad boy. <laughs> he's not a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> but he can look it. He is a good actor. So, yeah, I'm sure in time we will continue to appreciate this McNeilina's Naked Era. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I saw on, um, on Maria's story today, I think it was. Shout out to Maria. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to... <laughs> Maria won one of the calls with Jimin. Ultimately, yeah. Maria's well, yeah, our friend. Friends. We went to... Uh, our friend that we met in Busan. Busan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very very lucky girl. Anyway, she put on a story today that, like, BTS Chapter 2, No More Clothes. Yeah, No yeah. More <laughs> We've yeah. got all our dreams. Don't need those anymore. Now we're going to do the clothes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Anything else we want to say about what's been going on? Nope. Nope. Okay. Let's get into face, then. Face. Face. So the promo cycle, I guess officially the first thing we heard about this was that in, I think it was December 2022, one of the big hit reps said that they were planning two member solo albums in the first mm. half of 2023, including Jimin in February. Mm. So we were all very excited for February. And then we got well into February, no albums even been announced. And then Jimin went on Weaver's Live and said that actually it's going to be in March now. Yeah. It yeah. was delayed. Yeah, it was while he was building the Valentine's Day bare Lego set thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was cute. On Tuesday, the 21st of February, a mysterious countdown mm. in a like skin color pink appeared on the official Big Hit Instagram with a link to a website with the same pink design. Is this when the Circle of Resonance stuff came out? And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this seems so intellectual. Like it's going to be so deep. Yeah, well, we thought it was RM's. We, we thought, thought it was, was RM's RM. red yeah. album. Yeah, we did. We thought it was the pink album. We were like, there's no way this is Jimin. Yeah. <laughs> so the countdown page said, Circle of Resonance, Reflection of Vulnerable Minds and Unexposed Wounds. Waves originated from the deepest invisible world, pass through the face on the surface, and reach others to resonate while transmitting the inner voice. I remember that. <laughs> Wave spreads beautifully, finding its own flow, despite wounds and distortions from a smallest scratch. The face of unwavering effort, 
despite repeated falls and pain. Oh. Yeah. I've written it sounds very singularity, mm. like something's trying to break through from within and sort yeah. of crash to the surface. But like the lake's not frozen. You're just letting the wave come up through your face. Oh, and that's okay. how you're communicating what you're feeling inside to the outside world. It's very just nice. circle of residence. I want that as an album title. <laughs> I would have maybe been a better album title. Maybe, yeah, 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 we were set up to be <laughs> it's fine yeah and then if you click the link in the instagram story you got this countdown it said face of facing the deepest part of inner self an echo tremor and a small movement to reach you waves originated from the deepest invisible inner world the same thing again we didn't know what this was but mm. if you went into the i think i don't know what it's called it's one of those computer terms the metadata metadata it did say Jim and Annette. it did but yeah officially when the countdown finished we learned that Jimin's new album face would be coming out on the 24th of March I wasn't impressed wasn't yeah I? I was like face we had a lot of thoughts on the name yeah really. <laughs> I didn't like it I just think face is such a basic word after we'd had circle of resonance yeah. we've been talking about you know faces yeah with an s has got more face yeah face it just sounds like an insult really yeah like people go like face yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said it was i think mean, jimmy's talked about this since right that it was about the concept of face yourself yeah but they already had a song called face yourself they so. have an out it's a japanese album yeah it's a japanese album called face yourself i ge- genuinely think they were going to call it face yourself he even said that in such a i think yeah, he yeah. was like oh yeah it was all about facing myself they must have been like, yeah, let's call it face yourself. And then they're like, oh, no, actually. Maybe that's why they were a delay. They're like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they messed this up. Yeah, damn. And then they couldn't, oh. ed- they couldn't insert the S on because they'd already got all the graphic. Yeah. yeah. So they just got rid of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were just like going through all the documents. Like, delete, <laughs> delete, 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 delete. delete. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, we already did that. <laughs> Yeah. We did also find out that the two pinks, you could match them up with his skin tone. They were Jimin coloured. Jimin's face coloured. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there was also a video of a droplet on Instagram. So they're sort of trying to illustrate this like circle of resonance. The goes in and then yeah. creates ripples. Ripples, that's what I was trying to say. The next day, they released the map to come back. It said that we would get a pre-release track. We learned from that. There was also a um, behind the face video released of Jimin working on the song. So he was just hanging out with other producers like P Dog. Oh, stuff. and he looked and, really sad in the yeah. black and white one. There's like images of him just like looking into the distance. He kept talking about my story. That was all I got out of the Korean. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first thing we would get as part of the map was the track list, which would come the very next day. And we found out it was only going to be. Six songs, Six. if you're generous. You weren't too happy about that, Natasha. I can remember. No, it's, I'd prefer have me another month waiting. Give me more songs. Yeah, it's a mixtape. It's a lot to call it an album. It's 19 minutes, right? <laughs> that is it, it's very close. Shorter than... It's very close to as long as Jerob's one. I think yeah. Jerob's was 21 minutes. Yeah, and there's the a hidden track that we'll get to as well. So we I guess it's longer. We didn't know that at this time. Yeah, no. yeah, and it, the thing is, it's not six tracks; it's four tracks because interlude, interlude, plus yeah, English version. But Jimin has writing credits on all the songs except yeah. the interlude. And RM's there. RM was there, RM's yeah. got his credit on Face Off and Like Crazy. So that's nice. He worked mainly with, like, in-house producers. Mm. He talked about that on the social tour because yeah. they were, like, able to talk to him about, truthfully, about how he'd felt. And Because so they've all nice. known him for a long time. Like, P-Dog's been with them, what, 13 years, the same amount of time that they've been a band. There was no information on features, and obviously we found out now that there are no features. But people thought that there might be a Yungi feature on the Set Me Free Part 2 song because obviously Set Me Free Part 1 is Yungi's song. And Yungi said during the festive dinner that Jimin had asked him to feature on a song. Mm. So we were all waiting on that. Or especially all of us in the Yungi Hive were waiting yeah. on that. So, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> but um, Jimin didn't follow happen. up. <laughs> I think Jimin also said that he wanted it to be like his own his thing. Own. That's yeah. why he didn't have any features. Unlike our I mean... But everybody on it. <laughs> he wanted everybody on it to mm. add color to the tracks as yeah. they were. I'm like, anyway, <laughs> let's not argue again. And then on the seventh, we got the first mood photo for mm. face. It was the black and white one where he's in like a room where all the furniture is covered by lit sheets, and he's like walking out the door. Doesn't really say much. I'm not sure I felt any more like inclinations right. about what I was gonna expect. But, but it's I mean, maybe not it's like, like a 
somber yeah. vibe. It wasn't no. poppy, colourful, neon. It's, it's like sad. Hope world. Yeah, it's not hope world. It's not hope world party. <laughs> so, based on this uh, circle of resonance text and this mood photo, we now know that it's going to be a bit not a downer, but like a moody, moody one. But like crazy is not moody. No, but it is about like the, the, the lyrics are moody. I guess. Yeah, but, it's party all night. But for a reason, you know. He was like, <laughs> He was in a bad place. Party for a reason. Yeah. We're going out this Saturday, it's not like, but with meaning. You know, like you know the like Usher songs, where it's like, yeah, yeah, everyone throw your hands up, yeah, grab yeah. the person next to you. We only have to know with those ones. It's not that. It's not that. No. <laughs> next time we go out, we're like, we're we going out for a reason with meaning, or are we just like going out to like let loose? No, letting loose is what he was trying to do. I think he said that he was in a bad place. I don't know. Um, we'll get well, into it. Face off, kind of touched about. Well, he's, again, he talked about it on such Tower how he had been drinking a lot or something yeah I think that's, drinking more yeah that's what he was insinuating and like having a bit of a rough time but not realizing he said oh I thought mm. I was just having fun but looking back I was struggling and it's and hard to know the difference yeah now the concept photos start coming out so at midnight Korea time on the 10th of March we got the hardware version of the concept photos and they were really dark mm. Mm. The lip piercing was something else. And then he had his horny look. Quote, <laughs> <laughs> Quoting Jimin himself. Yeah, no, it was in the, I think it was in one of the sketches. They put like, oh, and now we're out of the horny look. Like, don't look with the horns. Well, and isn't it, aren't they fawns? <laughs> so then I was like, oh, that's the fawny look. And then they were like, no, it's the horny look. And I was like, oh, oh, right. Okay. Because that too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, it works. I didn't even realise they were on him until now. <laughs> You were just like, yeah, yeah, you use horny. I thought you were birds. Oh, oh like, yeah, bird those, tattoo. like, those little tattoos yeah. that people get. I think these are nice, though. I think the horn one's my favourite of the hardware photos. Mm. Although the lip ring is yeah. nice as well. And the lip ring's now got a filter. Yeah, that's true. An Instagram you can filter. do it yourself, guys. Yeah, you yeah. can. Go and get your own lip ring. I haven't done Then that. get horny. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can only get See wet. myself in the hip <laughs> lip ring, like, wow. The wet one's on now. Ripple. <laughs> There's a ripple filter oh, that also came out. Right, okay. Well, those go together. Um, and then there were also reels. The reels weren't that exciting, to be honest. But then the next day, we got the software version of the concept photo. How do we feel about this hardware software? Why do you have to call it where? I don't know. Like, hardware software is like in a computer. Yeah. <laughs> like, hardware, like, physical laptop, software, would've... programming. I guess it feels more like a metaphor, but at the same time, like if you called it hard version, soft version, that would have been the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. or light <laughs> and dark. Like, I get light and dark's maybe probably it, overdone. If his concept was like the computer of me, yeah. like me and as AI or whatever, then it would have made sense, but it's not. Well, it's the just... pictures have got like an iMac edit to it. Yeah, like the little frame, yeah. but like in the wider concept of the album. But the software version of the concept photos, they were really, really nice, cute. very soft and sweet. He had a little scar on his cheek. And, and on his eye. Yeah. And well, then I think I preferred the software to the hardware. Yeah, me too. Even though the hardware's got the fawns. He does a better soft look than a hard look. He does a better soft look. Be he's, not, he's not an angry man. No, exactly. Which is why when he's like swearing all over the songs, I'm like, it's nice, but like, I don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> He's like, shut up, fuck off, get out of my way. I'm like, mm, okay. It's Whatever, like a little, Jimin. little kitten with an eye. Like, hey, he's trying to break out. I know, yeah, yeah. Breaking out from within, I believe in him. But like, if he came up to me and said that, I'd be like, mm-hmm, sure. <laughs> okay. There are also reels where he sits on the edge of a couch. I like that reel more. Mm. But another reason why software is superior. Um, <laughs> in some cases. Yeah, but you can't run good software if you don't have decent hardware. That is, that's true, that's true, exactly. Oh. Yeah. And then on the 13th at midnight, we got the Set Me Free Part 2 poster. Mm. And this is where all the theories really started yeah, I'm a kick-off. going. There was one theory that the headshots, the like hardware and software photos, there's like four shots of him just leaning his head in different ways. Mm. And there's a theory that those were like moon faces. Oh uh, yeah, moon cycles. Yeah. And then the, on the Set Me Free poster, some people thought that the square wall structure looked like a planetarium, which I guess would fit the space theme there isn't a space theme really but he you know he likes moons because he mm. has those moon tattoos yeah someone found out that the moon face for march 24th 2023 when the album came out is the waxing crescent face 
but also the moon phase for June 13th, 2023, when BTS debuted, was also the waxing crescent phase. The little thin one, the one that you had at the top of his neck. Top, yeah, that so that is cool. Some, however, argued that the structure that you can see in the Set Me Free Part 2 poster looks like a panopticon. So if anyone doesn't know, a panopticon is a perfect prison model where the, the cells are sort of along the walls of a circular building and the watchtower is in the middle. So the prisoners have to sort of behave all the time because they never know when the guard in the middle might be watching their cell. It was originated by the English philosopher and social theorist Jeremy Bentham Mm -hmm. in the 18th century, but it has been sort of popularized more by a, a French philosopher called Michel Foucault. So he, in 1975, he used the Panopticon as a metaphor for the modern disciplinary society in his Discipline and Punish, the Birth of the Prison. So he thought that the modern society, which had developed since the 18th century, had gradually replaced public and sort of corporal punishment with a culture of written rules and laws where surveillance is what keeps people in check. Mm. As in, like, people police themselves for fear of, of being watched. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's loads of stuff on the surveillance society, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's loads of research that said if you put up a sign in your store that says, smile, you're on CCTV, crime went down, even yeah, if you yeah, didn't yeah. actually have CCTV. And a society where all your actions are or could be seen without you knowing means that you were currently living in a very controlled society where we police ourselves because someone might be watching. Mm. Mm-hmm. Then it's a full allegory for fame, right? Do you mean constantly? There's no way, very few opportunities where he isn't being watched. And the consequences for him as an idol are far greater than the consequences for you and I as a non-idol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're expected to be this perfect person. Yeah. And then the levels of control you exert on yourself to maintain that image yeah stops you from being you yeah, um, yeah i liked it i liked it as a, it's a good concept, concept. Yeah. It, it fits and not knowing when you're on and when you're off like obviously there's interviews and performances but also there's daily life yeah someone could see you or like like if you meet a fan for example and you're like a bit rude. not nice to them or you don't have time to say hi or whatever yeah. and then that fan could be like so and so i met jimin and he was super rude to me mm-hmm. and then that could like really like, actually affect your image when we get to the music video, we can talk about sort of where he's positioned within the Panopticon because he's sort of playing both the role of the watcher and the prisoner in it. Which Ooh, is uh, exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. At midnight Korean time on the 15th, we got the Set Me Free part two teaser. I think that was the one where it was like all dark and then you could hear him do the Set Me Free high note. I'm not going to try and do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that was cool. I was enthused by that. Mm. Yeah, the audio was good. Yeah, and you could hear that high note obviously is all over the song, but mm. it was kind of haunting at the time. I thought, like, mm. gave me the first idea what the vibe of the album would be. Although I must admit, I thought maybe more would be like this mm. based on it, which is not really. Jimin was dancing in what looked like the Panopticon again. So I think uh, we were more sure of that theory by then. And there were loads of dancers, and then there was the vocal. And the next day, there was a YouTube Shorts teaser. It was the opening sequence of the MV where, you know, they zoom in on the dancers and then the dancers make the, like, scary faces and, like, shake their hands while it goes like, Rah. yeah. <laughs> and then it stopped when Jimin does the, <laughs> at the start. <laughs> His interview with Korean Vogue came out around that time as well. And about the album, he said, I tried looking deep within myself and being as honest as possible with this album. Much of it's based on my own experiences, but I hope... Everyone who listens finds it relatable and comforting. I've said somewhere that the songs RM wrote for his solo album Indigo, which was released late last year, made me want to go for a bike ride. No. <laughs> if you listen to RM's album while cycling to your favorite coffee shop and then listen to my album while you're there, it'll be a perfect day, I promise. Okay, but then after the coffee shop, we have to go to the club. Yeah. <laughs> <This is> a... <laughs> yeah, and your album's not really coffee shop. It's not coffee shop, Jimmy. It's literally the club. Yeah, you can cycle to the club and then you can get... <laughs> it was very cute, though. Oh, really yeah. <laughs> the 17th was then finally here we had set me free part two the music video and the song what do we do on the day guys did you listen to the song and or did you watch the music video first i watched the mv first on my phone i listened to the song first on my way to work oh, yeah. yeah i don't think i watched it that day 
<laughs> no. <laughs> no, but as well, also, I don't have Spotify Premium, so I can't just play it. When I hit play, it like shuffles with a load of different artists. Oh. And oh, when it's so a song annoying. that I don't like, so I just. So when you eventually came to it, did you listen to it or watch the MV first? I think I probably listened to it first and then watched the music video, but not like. Not that much. No, because I watched the MV a couple of times. Yeah. Liked it. And then when I started listening to it, I was like, oh, I need the MV. <laughs> It were alright. I think I'd also add like Leanne's comments on the auto tuny opinion that she has. Yeah. So I was just like, mm, I can understand where she's coming from, but yeah, I quite liked it. Yeah, yeah I, I liked it as well. Yeah. I hated it, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> you um, hate auto tune. It's fine. I just hate auto tune. There's just no need for it, especially for Jimmy. It, it does in, in the side. It, it, it detracts. No. no, I don't mind the like heavy bass it's and the for like the effect. For the theatre, yeah. but I just as soon as it comes on, it just makes my skin crawl. I've listened to a different like music podcast, and then they said that people find auto jarring because apparently the human ear is very like tuned on the human voice. So even mm. if someone screams from a far away, you'd be able to hear it because mm. that's like a evolution survival thing. That's why people find like auto tuned voices really uncomfortable. See, it's not. I think Don't for do me, it. yeah, Evol- evolutionary. <laughs> I'm evolutionary advanced. Is all I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the MV was brilliant really well done just that auto tune and it's really early on and then it's just throughout like yeah. on every chorus and I was just like get this out of my ears <laughs> like I said I find it really com- uncomfortable and quite stressful yeah the more time I've spent with it the better it is but I'm glad that the rest of the album doesn't sound like set me free part two yeah it is very much a uh, standalone thing which I don't think was clear really when the when it came out and also it didn't fit with this whole circle of resonance no. exploring i think i'd been lulled into a sense of gentleness does but, it yeah. you probably know because you're sugar like is it actually a part two to set me free like the lyrics are there any correlation at all so jim had talked about how sugar had talked about how he wanted to be freed from uh, his expectations of like I know that things aren't going to turn out the way I want, like set me free. And then Jimin said that he had also wanted to escape his sort of inner critic and sort of anxiety. And he was like, it's not a part, like it doesn't flow on from your song, but it has like similar topics. So there was a little Instagram clip of Jimin talking about it. He talked about it being a great song with a grand atmosphere and performance, which is certainly true. Then he also talked to a website called Consequence about it. Um, there was quite a long interview. In the MV, he has different outfits on. Mm-hmm. There's one with a top with little cutouts, mm-hmm. and then he wears like a bomber jacket over. And then there's one, obviously, with, where he's just got the denim jacket, I think it is, and he's shirtless, and he's got the German poem uh, on his... Yeah, the German poem. Yeah, the German poem on his... Body. Chest, yes. <laughs> And he, in the behind the scenes, he called it his cheat sheet for exams, which is very, very funny, very <laughs> cute. But yeah, the German poem, he said he chose it because it resonates with the song lyrics. It goes, I live my life in ever widening circles that stretch themselves out over the things, over all the things. I won't perhaps complete the last one, but I intend on trying. I circle around God, around the ancient tower. I circle for thousands of years. I don't know yet. Am I a strong falcon, a storm, or a mighty sun? That's what it says. Lovely. Yeah. Mainly it's just, we talked about this, Jimmy winning the shirt for your jacket yeah. battle. Yeah. <laughs> like, you've got this jacket, yeah, but no shirt. He said he was the one that came up with the look. He, he, of course he did. Yeah, he suggested the look to the director. And then it's well, it looks great, man. Right? Like, the... Oh, you're nicking all the time. You don't even have any muscles. <laughs> Yeah, that Yungi said that to him. So yeah. rude. <laughs> and just You're just skinny. You don't have any muscles. You don't have that in shape. And Jimmy was like, I, I, I'm skinny. I'm trim. And Jigger was like, Yeah, yeah, but no muscles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. But the internet died. We obviously had the continuation of the uh, naked chapter. Just great. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, the internet also went ablaze with all the theories. I don't know if we'll have time to cover all of them. Obviously, we'll do a full face episode mm-hmm. one day when we get through all the other solo <laughs> albums still have not done a solo album for those keeping track essentially the um internet seemed to think that the symbols in the mv and the lyrics were all sort of an extension of the map of the soul shadow themes okay which we haven't done map of the soul seven yet mm-hmm. which is where the shadow comes up but 
I do agree. And, the, and there are references to On in the lyrics. So he goes, got to go insane to stay sane, which is a line from On. Mm. People thought that the auto-tune is used to refer to the shadow, both oh. in New Gi Song Interlude Shadow, which does use a lot of auto-tune. And you know that there's a bit at the end where he's like rapping really fast and that people are saying that that's like his shadow talking to him. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, it was directed by the same director as Interlude Shadow. Oh, right. It is about facing your fears, which I was like, the fear and the shadow are not the same thing. But... No, because the shadow is your shadow self, right? It's the negatives of you, not your yeah. fears. Your repressed sides of yourself. Yeah. Then I thought, actually, when we got the like crazy music video and how that focuses on like your feminine self, I'm like, maybe that ah. is what you fear, actually. Ooh. So, yeah, maybe that's sort of how you link it together. And people also kept being like, oh, he's escaping his shadow. You cannot escape your shadow. Your shadow is part of you. You have to accept you your have shadow. To accept it and integrate it, yes. And yeah, truly love yourself. Yeah. These theories online, they've clearly not listened to the podcast exactly. or read Jungian theory no. or been reminded no. of Jungian theory so many times by their favourite podcast host and friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I thought there were also links to Lie, which obviously Ooh. deals with his own anxiety. There's the big sort of dramatic high notes in the chorus and then the lift in the MV is really similar to the lift in the live performance. Mm. And the lift also could link to the Black Swan art film, which is where the sort of dance company did the like art film to the classical version of Black Swan. And the lead dancer who is shirtless, which is another parallel. Oh, he's shirtless in the, in the black MV, film. Exactly. The other dancers who are in black sort of represent the shadow so first he sort of struggles against the others but at the end of the like dance film he starts to control the dancers and then they lift him up in the same way that they lift him up at the end of Mm -hmm. part two Uh, the video on the song black swan sort of shows the members fighting against their fear of losing the their passion for music which is something they ascribe to the shadow that they've sort of suppressed but what happens is that they end up facing their fear and use it to inspire further creativity and that's something that Jung did say like if you Mm -hmm. are willing to go through the hard work of facing your shadow integrating it and it will be something that can foster creativity and sort of inspire you further that ability to reach self-actualization right yeah Ginny said in the reaction video that they are sublimating their pain into their art and rather than being afraid of losing the passion and inspiration they end up using that fear for further inspiration oh lovely yeah all very meta Lovely. Yeah, and then in the reaction video, they also because they were like, "Jimmy, you can dance like this. Like, get your shirt off. We'll film it." With, ah, and now it's you. happened. And now it's happened. Harem yeah. manifested it. What an angel! Yeah. <laughs> it was very cute to see. I'll uh, I'll try and link that as well in the Google Doc eventually. So, like in Black Swan, Jimmy is declaring his freedom from the constraints of the of the shadow and his fears and mm-hmm. his anxiety, and sort of the fear of being watched and judged goes in ha- hand in hand with anxiety, for example. That's, That's really sick. great, actually. Yeah. What about the dancers? You talked a bit about yeah. when you're watching it, are they controlling him? Is he controlling them? I think the, sh- the dancers are representing sort of that darker side and mm. the sort of fears. And, you know, like right at the beginning when they zoom in and they do all do the like really scared face. Mm. Like he isn't fighting against the dancers. I think that's the main difference from the Black Swan mm. art film. He is sort of in front of them or leading them or controlling them. Obviously, at the end, you all had the scene where they all lift him up and then drop him down and then he's in the white clothes. And, and they all drop to the floor, right? And yeah. he drops up in the white. Is he free then? Yeah, I think right. that he's freed. Him being free. He's freed to, of, to uh... go crazy. He's well... free to go clubbing. <laughs> I don't think that's what it's about. Aww. It's about sort of, I guess, not having the constraints on your creative output or whatever yeah um, what did you think of the music video before the theories I thought it was good mm. like it's entertaining as a thing but obviously for me I'm like oh my god what's this all <laughs> mean? Yeah. I thought so, it was yeah. big it was a big production was, compared yeah. to Jack in the Box and Arson where you know it's Hobie and a band yeah. and then even Wildflower just are um, like yeah their solo whereas Jimmy have brought this whole production value out of all the dancers and he's yeah, gonna take yeah, all yeah. those dancers on all of the <laughs> stages you could really yeah. feel that dance aspect I think what I through. sort of ended up thinking was that he has continued in the sort of BTS tradition he is way yeah more than the others have mm. like we um I was saying that it would could have been called like face yourself mm. and then you've got set me free which is young gear has also done it mm. and then like crazy is like a movie title maybe he's mm. just like not that he's not got his own creativity but also, like, maybe he struggled in some aspects. So, like, he took little inspirations, like, little bits. 
and then kind of just like worked on that instead of being like let's bring up this brand new idea yeah, yeah. a bit like you said in Shush Tara, he's on that first step for him because of where he's taking it he's very very close to and I think it, BTS and that pop yeah space I guess like they would have gone through a process of of thinking about these mm. themes when they did map of this all but maybe he feels like that process for him isn't really finished mm. yet another thing that I thought was that it's it's interesting that he sort of continued in this tradition because we think and also we saw from such a when he was like where would you go if you could go anywhere and he was like 2025 like he wasn't the one that needed a break I don't he believe didn't in, need a break yeah, yeah and didn't. obviously we know now that they needed to take a break for the military anyway but like he wasn't uncomfortable in oh. Jimin's Me. always been an idol and always loved being an idol. Yeah. He's wanted to be an idol and from so day Shuta, one he was and like, he's safe oh, in that. Yeah, and actually, yeah, I felt really warm and safe. He's comfortable. And he was like, actually, I think it's okay for me to feel warm and safe and comfortable. I think only he was like, well, you let me do all the hard work and whatever. Yeah. When you're warm, I'm cold because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm carrying all of this emotional stuff that you're doing. And... But then he also did say, like, actually, you guys sort of taking the front stage in the performances does make me feel more confident in my mm. performance style so like that's the whole point of the group dynamic right yeah. like you have some people who excel in different areas like some people are better performers and some people are better lyricists and producers and etc so mm. expecting someone who's only ever been one thing to go out and be all the things is obviously probably like something exciting for him but also it's okay if he's like actually i I want to perform. Not all of them are MVPs like Kobe. <laughs> Not all of them are just naturally brilliant lyricists, dancers, performers, vocalists. I think you know? he's a great performer. <laughs> okay. um, I think you're right in the the MV feels very BTS. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that would be his closest point of reference. Reference, yeah. even mm-hmm. though you're a step out. There's a security around it mm-hmm. that doesn't have a vulnerability in the way that RM has when he's performing in Dago. Maybe not with the features, but you're just there on your own, yeah. singing these songs that you've written from your heart, as opposed to doing a big choreographed performance. Yeah. And it really leads into that. Oh, well, I know how to perform. Like he's, leaning, he's leaning into his strengths, right? Into his strengths. But yeah. I have been impressed by how, like, he could have just done an album of like disco club usher Jason Derulo type yeah. style, and he hasn't. He has mm. sort of looked within and he has. and used the references that he knows from his work with BTS, but used them well, I think. Yeah. We sort of suspected that, right, with the lie. He does have it in him. He just doesn't like tapping into it because it's hard, as we saw in the behind the scenes. Yeah. And maybe it's not, it's not that he doesn't like doing it, but he's not ever had to. He was never there to write the lyrics, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think also on Such a he said that he'd work much more on the melodies than the lyrics when they'd done stuff together. So there was also a theory around the, when the dancers all walk into that big like twist yeah where it sort of looks like a snail yeah, yeah. people the think that's shell. The, um, the golden ratio or the or the fibonacci sequence which i found oh, out recently wow. is the, the same thing mm. and the golden ratio is found organically across all of nature and in art it's used because it is meant to be the most visually pleasing form that an eye can recognize mm. so if you look at the mona lisa or the girl with the pearl earring the sort of famous paintings they all sort of fit within the golden ratio mm-hmm. so if you want to extrapolate from that it's sort of a a mold that all great art needs to fit into wow i guess if you take that into account then you can see him as trying to like conform with the great art of those Standard. before him yeah. and the standards that he needs to reach as a so all the artists, because I think if he had put out a club banger album with no meaning, then you would have been a bit like, oh, yeah, this is not what I, what well, I would yeah. come, come to expect from from a BTS member. Yeah, and actually there was rumours of, you know, the Justin Bieber collab, you yeah, know, the yeah, collab yeah. with Taehyung and Vibe and like lots of yeah. stuff that was in this pop. There, there must have been hundreds of writers, you know, hundreds of Ed Sheeran songs just sat on his plate. It's yeah, like, yeah, do you yeah. want to sing this? Do you want to sing this? Because it would be an absolute hit. But yeah. He didn't. He, he chose to come within yeah. and produce something of his own. Uh, yeah, I really like it. I think I've written, I think it's as close as we've got to a traditional BTS style lead track in the solo song era. Mm. Uh, yeah, more was pretty big, but like not in the same way. No, nah. well, more had the references across. It doesn't have the production, it had the band. Yeah. And then on the 18th, we got the dance practice. Did that change anyone's opinions on the dance? No. He does have that um, cute moment where uh, when he like says, fuck all your ops. Um, and then he starts like smiling to himself. <laughs> Get him with a knife. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fuck all your ops. Yeah. Oh. That's the only thing like 
about the song that I don't well I wouldn't say I don't like it it's fine for him to swear obviously it's just that it's a little hard Jarring. to take from him mm-hmm. yeah um, well I think I hated it as much as I ate when like RM did it fucking really? trendsetters I love that not that My one like, when, um, I think it was when they were in LA or summer or Vegas he like swore on stage and all that like, uh, put, oh, yeah. put, put your mother put your hands, hands up. up and then this one I was just like oh Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel like Jimin probably, you know, it's like when you're at school and you're with your friends, you swear, and then you go home and you don't swear. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, like, RM, I feel like he's, like, swore once and you're just like, whoa, <laughs> you're not using that, right? you too, like, you just, no, just... Who knows? I think he's a more natural swearer, whereas like it's not so much the swearing, it's the angry, like, oh fuck are your offs and like yeah. all that sort of stuff. It just it doesn't seem like something that Jimin would say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like back to bang time. Fuck off, get out of my way. Like, no. I just I'm like, who who wrote this for you? Was it Aaron? Was it Aaron? <laughs> That's Aaron. That's Aaron. Jimin, you have to swear. Aaron's okay. writing credits are literally just fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, I'll take one percent of this song. So, moving past Super Free Part 2 then, on the 19th we got the poster for the lead track, Like Crazy. It was bent over a coffee table, there was lots of like crap on the ground. Like ashes? <laughs> no, it turns out to mud. be mud. There's a transfer of mud and then he puts his hand down on the table and his hand's muddy at the end of Like Crazy. I think the next thing that happened was the Set Me Free Part 2 behind video. He was very naked in that as well. He talked about how he'd been feeling lost and depressed during the pandemic and that he'd been determined to overcome those feelings and that's what he'd sort of been trying to show in the MB. And in classic Jimin style, he wanted to record it over and over again. It was that he was super complimentary about all the dancers saying that everyone was doing so well and I'm the only one I need to worry about. Aww, Aww, what an angel. Mm -hmm. And he talked about it being different shooting without the other members because they usually say it's a wrap together. (laughs) Oh, yeah. missing the boys. Okay. He's going to go for dinner with him soon, though, so that's positive. Yeah, that's true. And he said he wanted to express being able to get over something, but then getting lost again, as if you can't get off a hamster wheel. So that's why he wanted the like circular prison setting. Did he mention about the dad? No, he didn't mention it, but they did call it a panopticon in the subtitles, confirmed that that is what it is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I realized it didn't say about how he's sort of dancing in the middle of the room so he does kind of take on the uh role of the guard the role of the guard but because of this whole the guard is internalized because you're worried about your being seen i think the theory sort of suggests that the prisoner and the guard is the same because everyone sort of internalizes this in a guard in a guard but less of an allegory for fandom whereas if the dancers were in the middle and he was running around the edges trying to get away that's fair. But yeah, I think it's more about the inner feelings, mm. and less than external people watching. And then we also got the first teaser for like crazy mm. and then the YouTube shorts teaser. I wrote, it feels a little slower and sexier, but still R&B. Yeah, it was nice for me. I liked when the teasers came out because I was a bit worried that we, it would all be auto-tune. intense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas I was like, oh, Definitely. the like crazy teaser feels more like the gym in sound that yeah, that I, was I expecting, expected to yeah. see. So I Fair. felt better then. I was back in the. Yeah, I thought <laughs> my only thought when watching this was I uh, same like you. I was like, oh, this is more what I was expecting. But also, you know, when he's like sitting on the chair and that little like squiggly line sort of runs across him, mm-hmm. it looks like you know that new thing that you can do on your iPhone now, where you like press down on someone who's like, oh yeah, and it takes the outline of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it goes like it like scans them with that little squiggly line. And that's what it looks like. <laughs> You're like, love it, love it. I just yeah. want to scan Jim in. <laughs> and then he wrote us a little letter. Mm. Yeah. It says In English. Yeah. Hi Army. This is Jimin. I am back with my very first solo album face. I wanted to convey my honest feelings that I experienced during the pandemic through this album. So I hope you all enjoy listening. The main track like crazy is inspired by one of my favorite films. Guess what? That will be. Meanwhile, I'm going to answer some of the questions you asked. Thank you, Army. Always love Jimin. What an angel. Yeah. <laughs> People were wondering if he was talking about the movie like crazy, which obviously obvious he was. or he and he was. 
but there were also people thinking he was talking about the notebook because apparently that's like one of his favorite movies and he's talking about oh. how he's watched the notebook like seven times he hasn't yeah. of course. <laughs> oh yeah. jimin There's oh <laughs> And then on the 23rd, he was shocked and thankful that he'd won first place on M Countdowns mm-hmm. when he posted on Weavers when he was like, no, no, I, can't believe, I didn't, happened. can't believe it happened. And then he was like, hashtagging, our army won an award. And then on the 24th, the album it came out. Friday. Yeah, very Wait. exciting. And we didn't get up early, but we did listen. The first thing I did was put it on. How did you guys listen? Yeah, same on Spotify. Yeah, I listened on my way to work mm. and then at work. Spotify did the little tiny clip video. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I watched those. Yeah, I didn't watch the music video until like quite late in the morning, I think, because I like went to work, listened to it like on repeat and then got to work and I was like, I don't really want to watch it on my phone, the tiny screen, like mm-hmm. on my phone. So then I think my friend and I watched it like on our laptop, sort of in the corner. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah. I listened to the song through the music video, but I didn't watch the music video. I just like left it on toilet. Okay. And just listen to the song because obviously I don't have Spotify Premium. If you want to pay for it, please send your money in. <laughs> <laughs> we were meant to set up a buy as a coffee. Yeah, like, we maybe we will. But another reason why I did that was because my friend, well, like a few days after Set Me Free the music video came out, she was like, oh, it's only got 30 million. And I'm like, hmm. I can remember when I used to be in Armour that's like, play it on laptop, play it on iPad, on phone, mm. walk into Apple, put it on all devices the uh get to tesco's with minanan at 7 p.m put it on all them phones like <laughs> hardcore streamer. you went into the apple store yeah. and put it on all of the phone yeah. that's on so funny on that's the so phone clever. and then you while you do it you change like wallpaper yeah yeah well, we did that in the samsung we store. did that in the samsung store. Yeah, yeah that's in the samsung store during the bts exhibit yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not just a random this for like yeah 2017 2018 <laughs> It did get quite a lot of views, so I think it got like the same as on the street. Quicker. Yeah. Now might be not as much like we need to get over no, 100 exactly. million mm. views in the first 24 hours. It's not as big. It's more, no. I guess we probably see like Spotify and everything to boost it to get like Billboard. That yeah. boosts it more than YouTube these days. Everything's right. a scam. Don't listen to it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's the yeah, also they, true. Didn't they, they, didn't they like anything. some chat ended up? Deducting loads of views off there. Is it the hand tail one? Yeah, it would. Yeah. Trending on Twitter about so I was just like, oh, yeah, they do that end all up the time. Yeah. The other things that came out, you, there were like some little like poster things. There was one that said, face the reflection of myself in an unfamiliar appearance, face of facing the deepest part of my inner self, the face of unwavering effort despite repeated falls and pain. Actually, I think that mm. might be the only new line. I was just thinking about face when you were like, oh, it come into the face. And I was like, oh, like Surface. Which yeah. may have also been a better name <laughs> for this album. <laughs> yeah. Surface would have been good because then you could play it on, it's going to be something Surface, but actually it's not. But it's deeper, yeah. 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 That's and you could have done the better. hardware and software. It's yeah. Sort of surface and deeper, yeah. Yeah. Try to get your job at Hive. <laughs> well, they need one after this fucking album naming. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> don't love it <laughs> L- love the album yeah 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 but you remember like when Aram said about Adele doing 21 25 30, 30. so he was going to do mono indigo and try and represent it through colors what's Jimmy going to do next legs Elbow. um <laughs> eyebrow well oh, I think someone already toe. made that joke because I remember making the head shoulder season toast <laughs> <laughs> yeah we did we did we did we, we did, did. <laughs> yeah well excited for your new album shoulders Jimmy <laughs> never mind okay so i've written that we've pre-ordered our, our albums but not received them yet so we hadn't received them when it came out but now we have mm-hmm. very exciting we, we found out online however that there was a hidden track yeah where jk sings back up which is lovely Ooh. but also why do you why with the hidden tracks why I just yeah you've just put promos in christmas love uh, on spotify <laughs> like yeah. as this big release but they're still like la 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 yeah. <laughs> Like, I, I get that you want to sell physical albums, but, like, I'm not, not going to buy the physical album. And then, like, oh, there's a hidden track. I'm now going to buy it. Like, no, I don't have a CD player, Hive. Are you, like, in bed with some CD company, <laughs> CD player company, that you want to sell more CD players? Because if not, then this doesn't make any sense at all. I'm going to buy your physical CD regardless. And 
if I buy the physical CD and I stream, like I listen to that to listen to the hidden track, then I'm not contributing streams. Yeah. So like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You do buy the, like a oh. K-pop album anyway, just for the like photos. Cause I can remember when I used to ask for it for Christmas and like, you want an album? And I'm like, yeah, I want this album for the photos. Like no one actually buys it for CD. Mm. If you actually yeah. use CD, then we really live in. I know, exactly. Books. Yeah, that's that's the issue. Like we all buy K-pop albums, but we don't use a CD. Yeah. No. That's so, the thing with the third CD. I know. Proof. That's why you normally stick it in a frame. Exactly. Well, and that's it? Uh, so annoying because like, I just want to be able to put it on my playlist. I, Maybe that's what they should do is like they release like a Spotify, but reverse. Mm. So then on that, you'd obviously play your subscription and then you get to listen to it in track. Yeah, you could pay a subscription and then get all of BTS's discography. So then I can yeah. make my playlist on week. That I'm happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm never want... gonna go for it because they're in bed with the CD makers. <laughs> but as well, well like... but I'll still buy the CD. That's the issue. <laughs> like I will buy the CD as well, even if it didn't have a CD in the album. Still. Yeah, exactly. Like... Maria, <laughs> would you talk to Jimin on your one minute video call that you've won? Tell him. Yeah. <laughs> Sack CD off. Yeah, just. <laughs> stuff with these fucking hidden tracks it's so annoying bring up a new name don't call it an album just like here's the book yeah Mm. here's this um new photo book that jimmy's released along with these six songs sorry four songs exactly (laughs) technically it's five because there's a hidden one one. (laughs) if he decides to put it on spotify jesus christ yeah well it's annoying i guess for you guys but I am a Spotify, SoundCloud crossover gal. So right. for me, I've been listening to Face on SoundCloud. See, um, I have a SoundCloud playlist, but I never listen to I it. I never listen to it. Mm. And, and it's such a beautiful me. song. No, well, exactly. It's a really beautiful song. That's the thing. Mm. And like, also, if you're going to put it on the CD, we played the CD a few times to get to the hidden track, but it doesn't even have like any visuals. Like, what except that people are going to play them like on a DVD player. Yeah. And put like, the MV or some sort of waves or something over it. Yeah. And also, it's because we're not playing it on a CD player. We're playing it on like the CD. You have to listen through the whole English, English version of like crazy. <gasps> yeah, but until you get to six minute get thirty. It. Yeah. Which is sweet. Yeah. So that's the thirteenth of the six. That's true. That's, that's he put cute. it there on purpose. Oh yeah, I'm sure for him. Oh English version. Yeah. And he said it was about how he felt after they'd announced the break after mm. they had the festive dinner he and it's it. specifically for army it's yeah. related to army about festive dinner and let army listen to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah we need Thanks to, to we need boil. to get a letter to him yeah <laughs> all right well, i think we have to move on yeah fine. um jimin confirmed that like crazy was inspired by the like crazy movie mm. the mv we watched there were some theories as well about this one mainly about the girl in the nightclub scene mm-hmm. so people think she is Jimin's feminine side or Jimin in a woman's body. Jimin's feminine side is in the anime. Anima. Anima. Jimin's uh, anima. Yeah. Or Jimin if he was a woman. I think a bit of both because I in the explainer that I read it was like how he was trying to accept it so it starts out as being like the feminine side of him but then it moves into being the anima I think that's what they were trying to argue. Because the anima and the shadow are from the same yes universe. Soul <laughs> thing. The Jungian cinematic universe. Yeah. <laughs> but how so is that? You also have to integrate your anima in, yes. in order to do individuation. Yes. Perfect. That's the main theory. Is... So it's not a love interest? No. It's about having a conflict between masculine and feminine sides, trying to accept both, but never actually coming to terms with yourself. And that's why, you know, you see there's scenes of him walking through the crowd, scenes of her walking through the crowd, mm-hmm. but they never really like get together they never meet so she is him also exactly she's part of him and then there's the mud from the poster yeah where she's got the mud on her hand and grabs his sleeve and then at the end he's got the mud i don't know i need to check we'll come back to you once we do our proper face episode but um there is a scene i think where they walk through the club and they're all there's him and there's her and they don't meet Mm. after that it cuts right to him looking in a mirror and then he's thinking about like oh I see myself in the mirror or something like that like oh they're, they're my reflection and blah, blah blah that's how people sort of deduce that and obviously it reflects Jimin's style changes as he's sort of grown up with with BTS I think it sort of made sense that he would maybe write a song about 
that if he's doing this whole introspective journey mm. interesting interesting yeah we'll look further into that I right tell us the about the one. jeans yeah there's a face there are two faces actually, two faces the same guy oh my so, god yeah it's when he's in the white t-shirt He's wearing these trousers. I don't know if they're jeans or if they're like leather pants. Leather pants, leather. yeah. And they've got like a little pearl belt. Mm -hmm. But they have got two photos on the sort of lower thigh, I'd say. The photos are of a guy called Robert Michael Mapplethorpe. And he was an American photographer best known for his black and white photographs. His work featured an array of subjects, including celebrity portraits, male and female nudes, self-portraits, and still life images. His most controversial works documented and examined the gay male BDSM subculture of New York City in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Mm. And a 1989 exhibition of his sparked a debate in the United States concerning both use of public funds for obscene quote-unquote <gasps> artwork and the constitutional limits of free speech in the United States. There is an example of one of these artworks I put in our little Google Doc. And it's of two bare-chested men embracing. They're both wearing these big crowns. The person who put this all together likened it to the photofolio book that Jimin did. The one where he's wearing the love t-shirt. Yeah, where he wears the love t-shirt with the sort of rainbow pattern on and he wears the crown as well yeah yeah they, looking at them side by side yeah and i think in the same way as we talked about stigma obviously i don't know that we need to like guess guess work on anything on that mm. it, obviously you can he can want to represent anything he wants to represent mm. and you can be pro lgbtq without being in exactly. that community yeah but it's interesting like you said it adds depth to the yeah. work and it's, a, it's not an accident. I don't think it's a stretch. The it pictures isn't. of the photographer are on his knees yeah, exactly, in yeah. the music video. Yeah, it is interesting. I think it lends weight to maybe particularly the sort of he wanted to explore a different side to his own character. Mm. And are you supports and promotes yeah. LGBTQ. I guess there are easier, like, less covert ways of doing that, though. Mm. Like, you can be very pro. Covert. Maybe not in Korea. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, he'll know that people will look into it. Yeah. And it, it's, like, almost their waiting yeah. without causing mm. too much controversy and mm -hmm. splash. It gives yeah. a notice and a nod to that community and, and the, those subparts of... Mm. army in particular yeah, yeah. who are going to go off and do that research right we wouldn't be having this conversation about it we wouldn't be aware of it if mm. he hadn't done it yeah. and i'm sure there's armies out there who are part of that community who will have seen this and be comforted by mm -hmm. that that's fair support yeah as well as you know all the fanfic people going crazy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also i guess there was some backlash on people like taylor swift and harry styles for doing those sorts of overt support things when they've never when they haven't spoken out about it for a while it sort of felt like they were trying to make it about them and they were mm. sort of trying to insert themselves into that narrative, narrative that all of a sudden took this big forefront in sort of media coverage so and there's loads so, of yeah, stuff i guess there's good there's ways to acknowledge it without being like oh my god look at me i'm so proud to be too cute there's loads of stuff around um brands as well isn't there brands adopted yeah. like rainbow washing so brands Awful. who like adopt the rainbow in their logo but still yeah, commit like, and, like lgbtq support. atrocities yeah 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 and freaking sponsor the world cup but yeah also, <laughs> also i'm really proud of my yeah, yeah. brand we've now colored into a rainbow yeah. like yeah you can spot causes in a way that seems like self-promotion yeah. and that then doesn't have the message that you want whereas i think this is wonderfully subtle mm -hmm. I would agree. He did some more, well, he did loads more promo and interviews with different radio stations and magazines and all that sort of stuff. And we don't have time to go over all of that stuff. I've not even had time to read all that stuff. Mm. But we will pick out some faves. So first one I've picked is Jimmy Fallon. He's very cute. He talked in English for most of it. Mm. Yeah. He did. <laughs> he did. It's very sweet. He talks about how the album looks at the emotions he felt chronologically through the pandemic. He talked about meeting Joe Biden and he was asked, 
who were you starstruck by? And he was like, how <laughs> He did. Yeah. They said they are. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon was like, what really Halsey and he was like yeah yeah Halsey she's such a great person so talented everyone would be starstruck by her I think it's more I think it's the star I, struck yeah. was lost in the translation I, I like so who's too. a really great star who's, who's a really like, good like Halsey. who's someone you respect yeah. Like, as an artist, yeah not who makes you nervous and also it's someone who's safe for him to say to say like, yeah, yeah 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 and they get to joking that his uh, favorite nickname was Jim and Fallon yeah very sweet <laughs> yeah there was a couple of side clips as well. So the one where Jimmy goes to see Jimmy in his oh, yeah. room and then it's full of like fan Jimmy. merch. Like <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy fan merch and then he logs on and it's like, oh, here's your fan page. Oh my God, what am I going to do? <laughs> They're like keyboards on top of his photo folio and he opens yeah. the drawer and the balloons come out. Uh, and it's all like, you're all like, oh, is that us? Like, you know, like you are yeah. with bad decisions. Like, are we yeah, that yeah, cringy? Yeah. But then he comes out and he's just like, Jimmy's so cool. And I was like, yes, we are. Yeah. Fangirling is important. Exactly. And Jimmy supports Fangirling throughout Jimin all of his does, promotions. For sure. Yeah. Should we talk about the performance on Fallon while mm. we're on Fallon? Ah, yes. Well, it was before Fallon that I'd seen that he had apologised oh, yeah. pre-warned armies that there would be Skinship, skinship mm-hmm. skin on skin from female dancers. I'd and then too. I'd seen the comments, but I'd not seen it the, the as the performance i've yeah. not seen the performance but i saw the performance on fallon and i was just like oh my jesus oh why did i kind of go back in time and pick up a famous dancer but not even famous like semi-famous talented yeah enough. like good enough like yeah. good enough to yeah. be able to put your hand on his face yeah it was really great he said in the music bank that the dancer come on before he had and there'd be whispers in the audience where they were like oh okay four girls and they're like four girls and then four male dancers came on and they were like oh phew four male dancers as well they're all partners we don't have to like worry and then Jimmy came on and he was like just warn you yeah <laughs> and then someone had been like so it wasn't like they were partners they were all his girls uh-huh. <laughs> he didn't just have one partner he had four girls and every touch him oh. and the whole audience was yeah well apparently Jimin was like there will be touching and armies were like no you can't <laughs> so then Jimin went I can't and then he was like it's okay you'll get used to it <laughs> oh. yeah yeah he is very sexy it is yeah I also there was this girl on TikTok that interpreted the dance and how that also links to this idea of him exploring his feminine side because when he's standing the female dancers are all closest to him and then ah, the male dancers on the edge. shell on the edge. I didn't sort of take notes for the TikTok. I can't really re explain it that well, but I've I'll put a link to it. It was quite interesting. Any... Just seen in your notes the fan performance ad and the internet was ablaze with debate about whether it was okay for armies to be jealous. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Was it okay? How was the debate settled, Christine? Tell me more. Well, there were loads of Instagram comments in, like, so nice to see him be able to do this. And then people were like, oh, you know, I felt really conflicted. I felt really jealous. So everyone who was like, oh, I did feel jealous was like, I did hate her. Like, oh, straight, straight on, shut down. Yeah. It's okay to be supportive and jealous. Exactly. Yeah, you can be jealous. We're no. always jealous. No, as long as you're not like, I don't think you should be like, no, nah, you can't have female dancers. Like, that's not your call. But mm. you can be jealous. Like, you can't control how you feel. I didn't say anything about the girls getting hit. That's good. I would have been unhappy about. Yeah. Um, there was a long story on the Spotify K-pop on playlist. He talked about how the album doesn't have any features because it's his first solo and because it's an album about reflecting himself. And he talks about the members having encouraged him to express what he'd been feeling through the album because he had lamented to them. He'd like been talking about his struggles and they were mm. like, oh, you should put it in your album. Very sweet. His favorite line of the album is, I want to stay in this dream. And he said the dream that he wanted to stay in for a long time was BTS. Get lost. <laughs> oh. Poor little Jimin. He talked a little bit about how the biggest difference from performing with BTS is, is that his shortcomings are more on display so mm. he wants to work on them before he, they get all get back together they asked him like what can we do for you you do so much for us then he said ARMY can repay him by an, enjoying his music it's not perfect and he promised to work harder to bring us better music <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> and he wanted to say thank you to ARMY for always waiting for them <laughs> well, hashtag we will wait maybe he's just being like humble <laughs> 
oh yeah I've got so much improvement for them people like no no you aren't but if you were like yeah yeah I just fucked that album up there <laughs> 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 don't, don't even need to do Grammys next year guys just give them to, just just give them to my house yeah pretty much <laughs> wow okay anyway yeah he then came on live after a music he bag he, he thanked the armies that had turned off to the recording he thanked Sugar for coming in giving oh. him strike it was very sweet <laughs> I was very proud. And then he talked about Jin saying he'd been jealous of Jimin getting to do a music show. Getting so, to do his jealous. Yeah. <sighs> so then he talked about how busy he was, but he said on the 29th, he'll come talk to us about the album a lot and answer questions. But yeah, on the 29th, that's tomorrow. So we all get to listen to that. Sorry, we couldn't talk about that on the podcast. We had This is not about, a deep though. dive. Yep. In spite of what you might think, <laughs> this spite. is our initial reaction. Exactly. He also did an interview with Rolling Stone. I will link that. We don't have time to go through it. Yeah, so we had the Like Crazy Dance practice. Um, the next day, you could watch a video of Jimin listening to the album in different rooms. <laughs> yeah, strange. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, was, I, I did watch it, but yeah, it was uh, it was not that much more exciting than, than that, really. But then his appearance on the Pixid. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to say it. Yeah, Pixid. Pixid. Yeah, okay, it was out. It was really great. I watched this. I've I've watched it three times now. Um, (laughs) Because I watched it. I watched it once on my own and then I watched it with my mum. I've watched it a few times. Um, And this is the one where he pretends to be a fan from the provinces. Mm -hmm. So they get like four fans and him. And they put these little dividers up so they can't see each other. And then they get to text on like Cacao Talk. And out of the five of them, they have to guess who's the imposter. Like who's... The fake fan from the provinces mm-hmm. so they may be a fan of bts but they live in seoul yeah um and then ultimately they figure out it's jimmy straight away yeah um literally straight away because he doesn't he says he's from jenju but he doesn't know the area code for jenju yeah. so they're like everyone just typing their area codes really quickly and he has to google it and they're like waiting on you yeah Bet you've had to google it yeah um so then they're just completely onto him but then <laughs> at one point there's this one girl who's just an absolute angel she says yeah i've got these like 200 word introductions for each member Mm -hmm. just readily saved so I can tell people about them and they're like oh share them share them and they're just the most adorable thing it's like she shares the gin one which is like well boy handsome and then a little emoji best visuals and then another emoji amazing vocals and then another emoji hilarious and then another emoji and it just goes on and on with these like one word about how amazing Jin is with these Mm -hmm. emojis in the middle and then they're like oh share them all and then there's the one about Jimin which is like he's an angel he takes care of all of the boys touch him and you're dead he's the best dancer and after every like little phrase there's an emoji and it's just so long she's just said that to Jimin but she doesn't know it's him yeah that is a highlight dead and he reacts to it really well he's like it's really well worded and i loved the little pictures and emojis and then there's one point where they talk about what it means to be army and jimmy gets a bit teary yeah, that's he gets really sad right. when they say like oh you it's know help me through dark times help me through said. dark times yeah. they're my comfort yeah um, and he was like oh to feel like that these fans have got my back it makes me want to give more to them yeah. and he even said like in a really genuine way like I'd been joking all the way throughout, but in that moment, I felt like it was all jokes aside. Like, this mm. was just a real, genuine connection. And then he comes out, and they reveal that the imposter, which they guessed was him, is him. Mm. And they all just die, like, flawed. Yeah. Like, covering their faces, screaming. Yeah. And then he even says to them, like, oh, should the producers, oh, should we take, like, an army picture? What's an army pose? Then one girl does the gun, you know, the gangster bang, gun. Bang, bang, tan. Bang, bang, tan gun. And he was like, oh, we've not done that in ages. We never do that. And she's like, oh, right. <laughs> but then they do it. They go and do it's the not true, because they did it after on BPS. The, the, the gun, the and then they get pictures together. And it was just dead. And then there's the bit about uh, Stray Kids, where oh, yeah. one girl says that she's a big uh, Felix, young book fan that's her who she's standing now and he says to her to the other girls like i can't believe we've lost her she needs to come back she needs to come home it's like well, he goes like <laughs> young book name i'm not taking her away from you i'm just bringing her back home <laughs> it was so beautiful it's exactly how i imagined jimin at a fan meet beautiful beautiful interview would recommend yeah if you're gonna watch one bit of content that isn't jimin <laughs> with no shirt on yeah 
Yeah, go and watch this interview. Go and watch this interview. Good loyal fans of ours. So yeah, I did link a couple other interviews and a couple of reviews and stuff, but we don't really have time to go into those. So I think we'll just start off on our normal little questions that we go over with the new albums. So guys, question one is, what do we think about the concept? I think it's a really good concept. I think he's done a good job of building off sort of what BTS did with the references he's made sort of comparing to Jack in the Box and Indigo I don't know that it's like as clear of a story as Jack in the Box because mm. he had the box and the, the box, box and the Jack in the Box and mm. getting outside inside the box and that was just very clear and actually Jimin really didn't talk us for his outfits enough no. like <laughs> and he didn't have any props no. like I remember not prop per song well, maybe they're coming tomorrow in his big V live oh, yeah I bet they're yeah. in that they're in that they're in oh. that he's gonna be like and this black jacket <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you like the concept I like the concept I thought it was good as in chronologizing is that a word that period of his life from the pandemic from a very personal perspective I think it's good that it makes all the references and it's more similar to BTS music than maybe Indigo was and to an extent Jack in the Box in that way so he's made the references to the photographer to Carl Young to the Panopticon to Foucault to other BTS songs and I've sort of got all of that without doing a proper lyrics analysis. The only thing that I think is that it is a lot of them, like the concepts for the solo albums is every single time it's like, yeah, this is the real me, like really me talking about the inner me, like the real me, this is another side of me. And like, but I I guess that's sort of what you'd have to expect from people who have had to only create stuff that can compromise and sort of resonate mm. with all seven of them for so long and now they're having a chance to sort of express themselves I guess that's naturally sort of just where you go like oh this is the real me or this is a part of me that you haven't seen before mm. so it just feels ever so slightly done that concept but then that's not their fault because they haven't done it before it's just that the other members have well that's what we said about the photo books right they're all like these are all the, the sides of me, except JK was like vampire. Vampire. <laughs> JK, I'm going to do vampire for you. Everyone yeah. wants to do the sides of them, and JK did vampire. vampire. Respect, honestly. Respect, JK. Yeah. Respect. I, I also respect that he didn't go on a like, yeah, well, it's the part of me that feels like a predator <laughs> and la la la. <laughs> like I want to bite someone. Yeah. It was just, just like, like I, I just really, want to do vampire. The concept is, I think he said, the concept is that I have a lot of money and <laughs> I like to bite people. <laughs> <laughs> this concept sketch. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, he obviously trying to look within himself. Mm. I did maybe think it was going to be more surface. Not gonna lie, mm. I thought it was going to be more like vibe with Taehyung. Mm. But I have always, always thought that he's always been very emotionally intelligent. Mm. Like he's someone who's able to like empathize and he's and very empathetic. Sort of take care and then sort of see people, mm. other people emotionally and. I think that he was able to sort of use that and translate his feelings during a time when he sort of clearly had a lot of dark thoughts and when things must have been quite uncertain or difficult for him. They did for everyone during the pandemic, but obviously they sort of live off performing. I think that he was able to sort of translate that into this album isn't very that surprising when you think about it. Mm. Yeah, even though I maybe expected more of like a Club Bangers album. Natasha, thoughts? What do you think of the concept? I think it's it's all right. I, we Indigo and you are tired. <laughs> we Indigo and Jack in the Box. They've got I had somewhere to compare it to, and obviously they are known to contribute a lot of their own stuff to the OT Seven albums. So it's like with Jimmy doing that. It's I'm not holding him to like some. You're holding to a different standard. He's held to a lower standard than some yeah. of the other boys. It's his first foray, I guess. I don't think that's fair. And it's also fair to not have had very many expectations to start with. Mm, I think I agree. I think it fits as a concept for Jimin, as him doing that looking yeah. and trying to figure it out. But also, yeah, I wouldn't have been surprised with a vibe type. Offering. Yeah. Offering. Mm, I don't think it's as... I'm feeling the same frustration that I feel with it as I felt with Jack in the Box. Why? Because it's what Natasha said earlier, it's don't give me 15 promos, give me another few songs. 
this whole like with Jack in the Box with like, but it's so it's had so much prominence. It's got such a beautiful concept and it's so well articulated. Mm-hmm. And then the actual like substance is so small. Small. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas I guess with Indigo, you have got a lot more substance yeah. and you have got all the wrap around. Yeah. And actually, there was more to it than that was promoted really. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I, that's how I feel with Jimin's. I feel like I've seen a lot about it. Yeah. But the actual it is quite little. Yeah. Um. That's fair. That's my only sort of thing with the concept. The concept feels much bigger mm. than what you, what's actually produced. Or what you've managed to express, yeah. 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 Th- there's many more there places more that you could have gone to it and you could have gone deeper. Mm. I don't want it all in one song. Exactly. <laughs> one song and then you're tying in like, here's 50,000 words of concept. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, wait, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. oh, right. also, yeah, I want another song. Yeah. No, that's fair. Right. Should we move on? Yeah. Question two. What do we think about the album overall? I think it's really good. I don't think it dips anywhere. I do think if it was longer, I've written, maybe we could have allowed for more variation as well. Mm. <laughs> because I think there is an element of like everything that isn't set me free part two is kind of samey. Yeah. Vibe wise. But it's a good vibe. I, I did write in terms of my personal taste. It just feels a little like it's not like I won't listen to it, but it's ever so slightly sort of one note as in like the songs i've written i feel more like a loop than a roller coaster as in there's no sort of ebb and flow or sort of ups and downs it's just they never sort of reach a crescendo or go down to a low uh which is a style that sort of usually i don't resonate with as much or at least it'll take me a lot longer to sort of work out what Mm. i'd like or what i don't like and i have to sort of listen to it on and on and on again and i do like i like Lana Del Rey and all, all her songs are really say me and I'll listen to her album over and over again and then like after like six months I'll be like oh that that bit of that song I really like that bit but I think the quality is there and mm. I think I understand what each song is doing you're right I, about I don't know that there's like a standout like I love this song I hate this song and you're right about the crescendo right like it's all soft and gentle and Jiminy and then you get this big on set me free part two this big yeah. like bang yeah and then it's done yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're finished. Bye. Yeah. Ciao, ciao. Yeah. Like, oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? I've already said it. I think it's too short. Yeah. Um, I don't mind that it sounds the same throughout. I actually, I like the sonic cohesion, right? Uh-huh. So that's what I like about mono. That's a bit what what I like about indigo. Without some of the early songs earlier still earlier songs <laughs> so i like that really soft yeah. run of sort of from face off through alone yeah i think that goes well together i would have liked set me free part two and then maybe back to where we were maybe yeah. back to more original do you mean maybe vibe should have been on there as well maybe yeah Mm-mm. no you don't like vibe no i don't like vibe at all oh i don't know that it would have gone with that maybe if it would have been like a different feature so like having Taeyang in another song yeah like oh yeah we've done this one as well but as it is I don't there's not one that I particularly like oh don't like that but then also they're all okay wise they could grow on me but like it all just seems like oh yeah this is an okay song like it's it's a safe song I don't feel that way I think like crazy is an absolute slapper I can't wait to be at the BTS club night when like crazy comes on. No, you see, I love it. I even like. I prefer the Korean version to the English version because the English lines are so poignant. You're free in the club. You have to close your eyes, let go to the light. Then you're back to Korean. So you've just got those like free English lines to yeah. represent the song rather than the rest of the stuff in English. Yeah, I definitely I prefer the Korean. The Korean version's better. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. Um, but like the film intro thing, yeah, it puts me in a sad mood because obviously. It, I'm guessing it'd be a sad song, not a song, sad film. It kind of puts me in a bit of a dying mood when, like, sad to begin with being like, oh, what about forever? And she's like, oh. oh, you don't like the intro? No, I like it, but I've listened to, like, quite a few times where I'm now like, oh, I feel like I've watched this film and it's, like, a, it's a sad one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I definitely understand why it's there, the intro. Oh. It does make me feel a bit uneasy. I don't really know why. He talked about how the lines that he chose said exactly what he wanted to express and when he sort of related it to the I want the BTS to last forever and all that sort of stuff. Like I was like, okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. But 
it does make me feel a bit like oh that's like something's about to go wrong here ah yeah it gives you a bit of like anxiety yeah mm. if mm. i'm in a bit of a sad mood i'll go and cry listen to it like crazy yeah get lost <laughs> It's it's a dance track. No, it's a it's sad a, like you're in the club. It is sad. It is you sad. close your eyes, you're in the club, your arms are in the air, and you're just like, like living. And I want to feel the light. I want to no, feel but it's the like club. The Sia Chandelier song. Yeah, it's like that because it's like a club track, but it's about the inside of the club. Yeah, fine. Yeah, but you could still be in the club. Yeah. I I don't want to be sad in the club. Why? We... No, but that's what the song's about. Yeah, but I don't that. want to know but that like, now. If I'm going to a club, I'm in a better headspace to be like, I'm ready to party, I'm ready to boogie. When I'm just like, oh, when it comes on, I'm just like, oh, let's have a little bit of a yeah. roller. Let's I, I just know, cry. Know I mean, yeah. wow. Let's get it shower, sit and just let it rain. Yeah, it yeah, it's pretty good shower cry song. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm not sure we're talking about the same song. <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyway like crazy is the lead single pick yeah lead single picks what do we think i think when you've only got four to pick from yeah i think they should have been switched that's my main feedback but oh, and obviously i'm not like a music expert or anything like that so you don't need to take on my feedback but as in like crazy should have come out first yes and then and then have the feedback too oh, but then i would have really hated it on album one day he picked the right two songs but in terms of narrative and the concept it might have made more sense to present the problem quote unquote in terms of the song that leaves you a little bit uneasy and wanting more explanation which is this Mm. sad club track you sort of you understand that there's something wrong the struggles that he's going through at this time that inspired the album is what like Gracie sort of presents I think Mm -hmm. whereas the biggest point of the album and the solution to how he escaped his demons and sort of moved Mm -hmm. on from that period is presented in set me free part two so i think what you Mm -hmm. sort of got with releasing that first was one you already gave away the biggest the biggest track on your album you already gave us and that makes the rest of the album feel a bit one out to me Mm because there wasn't another standout track Mm -hmm. and also i think yeah, like I said, narrative wise, it just would have made more sense to not start with the, oh, this is how I resolved myself and how I integrated mm. my shadow and sort of was freed and reborn from my anxiousness and my depressive mm. thoughts. And now you have to go back and listen to all my depressive thoughts. Um, <laughs> whereas I think if you'd given me like crazy first one, you would have managed my expectations in terms of what the album's going to sound like. Mm. And two, I would have had this on album day, big like there's this song on the album that's nothing like I expected and that's such like a great surprise of the album. Mm. And also it's the key to the whole album, like the the concept. The key to the concept, yeah, exactly. The key to how I overcame this this period of my life. And that is the setup on the album, right? Yeah. I agree, I think. Oh, wow. But I wouldn't I wouldn't swap it with set me free. I'd... I'd swap it with an imaginary track that I've got in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you swap? I'd swap a Light Crazy as your first release. Mm. And then um, my imaginary track as your second release. That'd be like your more upbeat one to then be like, oh, we've got Set Me Free Part 2 as this different track. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so you want them to have three, three. MV tracks? No. No, Set Me Free Part 2 doesn't have an MV. No, oh. it just exists on the album later. Fine, just okay. For all the nerds. Yeah. If you want to make your own <laughs> album. It's not nerdy it if it doesn't have the MV. Well, I guess it could be. Well, like you don't a, know that. You've not read the lyrics. That's true. Like um, RMs, we did like a visual thing for it. Hmm. I'll just send you a picture of that <laughs> Plutorum thing. Put out the gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said <laughs> Whatever it's called. Fine. Okay. <laughs> I think the lead single picks are right and I wouldn't have switched them. Well, I prefer not to have been worried for a couple of days about what was coming. Mm. See, was but then the... what arrived, I was happy with. Right. I was like, oh no, this is what I was hoping for. But I've, obviously I've not heard Natasha's imaginary <laughs> This imaginary banger that she's waiting for on Jimmy's album. So no, I wanted to change them. The only other thing that I was going to say about the lead tracks was that I think they did inform each other in terms mm. of the nerdy bits. 
I had some issues with uh, his fear being portrayed as his shadow, which is that's not the same thing. But I think in them doing the sort of opposition of the sort of masculine feminine side and how that's integrated, that made it a lot more clear how sort of he might fear the repressed parts of himself and that unified it for me so I think they tell the same story. Is it what we expected compared to his previous solos? <laughs> I've written I thought maybe it was going to be a bit happier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, maybe I need to go back and listen to this album because I still think like crazy is a fairly happy song. It's not. Happy. It's happy until like you truly click onto it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. When you truly click onto it, but also like you listen to what he says about it. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. fair. Yeah, I think based on filter and serendipity, to an extent, I maybe expected more like ballady, like mm-hmm. nice, happy sort of major key songs than what we got. The lovely like breathy ballads that he's done before, mm. not the like swear lyrics, minor chords menacing beats that we got mm. i'm not saying that's worse mm. by any means but it's just different is it what you expected didn't expect much from him because mm. i guess on my first just <laughs> <vacation>. <laughs> yeah. literally where the fuck are his feet <laughs> yeah <laughs> were his feet there no yeah. is it shit yeah <laughs> no i think mean... bring back serendipity <laughs> no but as well like serendipity like He's not like, yeah, I did serendipity, no one else helped. Like, it, he so did lie and filter. Can't listen to filter. Bad memories on that one. And lie, I don't really like. So. What, you heard filter? Uh, Sam had to film a music video for a media project in college. Uh-huh. And she got me to sing filter. <laughs> so I've got, like, lip sync and music video of me to filter. So no. Now, which I need to see that. <laughs> and we've got no, it on our these, like, different coloured outfits. And I'm like, no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, I don't know. I don't know if everything and oh. I'm just like our uh, listeners to would like song. to see if we, but, yeah. <laughs> it's actually it'll be the most popular one in the next call that we do yeah. if our listeners see that we'll do like a side by side <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I say side by side we need you to edit it by the different scenes and new scenes yeah. anyway so yeah but I wouldn't say I'm unhappy Sarah's feeling He's just a bit sad. Things get worse before it gets better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now he's on up, oh, banger after banger after banger. <laughs> I thought it was better than I expected Yeah. in terms of performances, but my expectations around performances had come from Jack in the Box and Indigo. Mm. As an individual, mm. you won't necessarily put on these big stage performances and dancing, and I'd envision something black swan like for jimmy but maybe just jimmy on his own you know doing the lyrical dance with the white cloth and freely expressing his mm. ballet background oh, that and nice. that yeah and that whole performance aspect so i'd lowered my expectations unbeknown to me but i had mm. lower expectations for the individual performances yeah because we just really haven't seen any big so we haven't seen any big productions and both songs do come with quite big production mm-hmm. and performance that was better than I'd expected but actually within what I would have expected of Jimin and I'm glad he's still been able to he doesn't have to just stand up there with a microphone <laughs> I was surprised it had a concept so it's doing it's yeah same. beating my expectations there mm-hmm. yeah surprised at how deep it was so yeah mm-hmm. it is above my expectations compared to other solo stuff nice do we even need to do stand out though surely everyone knows it's the, it's the german writing it's the german writing it's jk and the calvin klein <laughs> that's not yeah, she's right it's jk and the calvin klein it is, yeah, <laughs> it's JK. it'd be good if you would you mean that's that. he's always getting outshined by jk exactly he's always getting his shorts out and fake club but no one ever sees him because of jk's ad I know. and now he drops off the german writing poem and then two days later jk's like yeah but Boxes. Yeah. If I was Jimin, I'd be fucking fuming. I know, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, JK, yeah. stop pissing on but my also, parade. You, know, you really need to just work on your abs because they're not being I'm just kidding. You're just kidding. <laughs> Stand out, look. I wrote, I like the sparkly denim suit thing he had on Jimmy Fallon, but I just hate those fucking like neck extensions mm, or whatever they put in his hair. Little I hate them. Molly bollocks. Yeah. Oh, gross. So <laughs> I think all the looks where he hasn't had them, he had, I really like the. The one with the photos on the knees as well. That is a nice look, but again, those fucking neck extensions. Yeah, that, oh. So it has to be the German writing. 
Yeah, mainly I, because Jimin gets to live his final dream of jacket no shirt. The other competitor I had was the software concept photo on the sofa where he wears the like sleeveless mm, top. Cute. Mm-hmm. Stand out like Natasha. Um, no, I do like the like initial concept photos, the biker jacket one, mm-hmm. the tight one. That one's a what, cool one. More than you like the German writing? Yeah, I think it looks a bit fake and a bit meh. I'm like, but gonna show he's naked. not wearing a shirt. Yeah, so but like, when I first saw it, I thought you were like, you know, the mesh shit. I that's thought what that she too. thought. And I was yeah. like, no, no, it is not. Mm. That is his skin. And then I said it. someone had to spray that on him. Um, I do like that one. But I think it looks good in like crazy music video. The running around the club. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite piece of content. Um, Interview um, with the four armies where he is playing the imposter and they're just the cutest armies. And I want to be those armies. I have to move to the province of Korea. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to pick the Set Me Free Part 2 and me for all the deep research. <laughs> Fine. And because I've not really watched any other content except the music videos, I'll go for like crazy. And Natasha doesn't have a favorite piece of content. Stand up content. It's JK in the Calvins, I assume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Sun Energy continues to be a problem. <laughs> anyway. Even uh, after six years. Yeah. Right. Initial anyway, skip. Initial skip. This was so hard. Agreed because the songs are so similar so i went with face off <gasps> yeah it isn't like oh i hate that song oh i love that song more mm. than i love the others so i like the choir and alone when it goes like no 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 that's nah, cute nah. yeah that one I, that's what tipped it for a long for me <laughs> over face off it was literally a dance of the choir and this are a slower track a bit total opposite the na 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 put me off and the clown bit i was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> interesting i like the na 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 both I'd have to pick Alone as my skip. Oh. I like the Tonight I Don't Want to Be Sober nice. thing. And then he starts swearing and I'm like, face off. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? What's happening? So kicking off. That, to me, is the club the club vibe. Fine. Nice. Okay. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to skip the English version of like crazy. You can't. Do you that. can't. What? So, Wait, you skip, skip what you want to skip. Skip Set Me Free Part 2. I don't like it, but I'm not skipping it. I'm skipping like crazy the English version. You can get in the bin. Yeah, we, we all know that. <laughs> we all know that exactly. Well, we would have all picked it. That's really like skipping the the interlude, which I, I do really like. The interlude, I usually but drink it. Oh. You can't, yeah, you can't. It's like skipping the holiday version of Dynamite. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> Skip again. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna have to skip Set Me Free Part Two. Yeah, see for the auto tune. Yeah, no, which is fair. Initial favorite song. Come on. It was between. Set Me Free Part 2 and the hidden track letter for me. I feel like the hidden track's a bit of a cop out, so I'm going to go with Set Me Free Part 2. Fine. Natasha, and it's your favourite? <sighs> no. No. <laughs> Album no. full of skips again. Shocker. <laughs> no, I do, I do like Face Off because it will like uh, stands out, but I do like, like Crazy when I'm just not in a sad mood. Okay. So I'll just go for Face Off because I could probably take that. When I'm Anytime. down it dumps so or happy as Larry. Perfect. Mind like crazy. Love it. Love, love, love. I think it will sustain and make me happy, even though apparently it's sad. <laughs> nice. I'll keep going. All okay. Right. Oof, scores. Scores on the doors, guys. Okay. I've not written one down. Does anyone want to go first? I've not written one down either. I've been thinking about mine a bit. Natasha, do you want to start line? off? Yep. It's a 2.5 no, from it's Natasha. It's not a 2.5. Okay, how many songs are there that you love on it? The most you can give it is four, because there's only four songs on it. Well, then I get a four. (laughs) Oh, go on, what were you going to give it? No, I was going to get a four. (laughs) It was between a four and like a 3.5, but then like 3.5 seems like a 2.5, so I'm going to get a four, because I prefer this initially of a Jack in the Box and Indigo. Obviously now I've changed my mind against them, but like now, get a four. Could change, could go downhill. How did you do in the go again? Two? 2.5. Oh. I did them awesome. like both. So I'm just right. go. I will give it a six because I think I was between a 5.5 and a six, but then with the BTS albums where I've scored 5.5, so it's like, oh, are you late too? And mm. I feel like it's better than that. 
not maybe from a variation and length point of view, but from a depth and quality point of mm-hmm. view, it is qu- it good quality. Is better. So it's not hip hop. No. <laughs> Yeah, no. Obviously, I gave Jack, Jack in the Box and I gave Indigo both 6.5. So I think I'm going to give this a 6 just because it's a lot shorter. It feels a lot shorter because it's got less tracks. It's not a lot shorter than Jack in the Box. I like the concept, but I think really like the songs. I think my problem with the Like Crazy and the songs that sound like Like Crazy is I think Like Crazy sounds a lot like The Weeknd. Mm. I never got into him. Mm. You know, I don't I never like understood the hype. I just felt like all his songs sound the same. And you saw that really good one about the lights. Ugh, no. Anyway, I think, yeah, I think that's what I don't like about it. So just slightly personal preference and slightly is very short. It's a six on my scale. What did I score, Jack in the Box? 6.5. Yeah, it's a five. It's down the middle of the pair of you. It's higher than a four. It's lower than a six. It's a five. I like Like Crazy. Mm. The other songs are come or go and I still I still hate it's happening for part two I just I won't listen to it I watched the MV because it got shut off but I won't listen to it I'd listen to face off I'd listen to a lot and I will listen to like crazy yeah I don't know I think it's shot I think Jimin's done a really good job yeah exactly that's why I just didn't want to give it lower than I'm not as wedded to the soul concept as you are and I know you've had a really good time with the concepts you know mm-hmm. but I appreciate it I appreciate that they put those references in no but you I... said that was a drawback in RM's album you said that you'd wanted us to have more references and philosophical theory you, you can never win we have you can never win you can have a very strong philosophical song just don't why would you put auto tune on it it's symbolic a, it's a five from me okay and I think the challenges as well as I think about it now it's just been a, too much of a roller coaster. uh-huh and then sent me through part two and I'm like, oh, what a brilliant performance. Oh, what's that noise? Christine's really into it. Oh, it's really intellectual. Oh, but I don't want to put it in my ears. I don't want to listen to it. I want to know the theory and I want to be there for Jimin. But the actual physical sound of it is not nice and kind to me. Yeah. Then into Like Crazy where I was like, that's more Jimin. And now I find out Like Crazy is a sad song. You can't even dance to it in the club. You can, you just... No, I can't now. I have to cry in the shower to it. It's just, it's, my emotions are all over. It's a five. You 100% can still dance to it. It's just that the song is about him dancing to it whilst he was feeling sad. Anyway, we have conflicting opinions. It'll be interesting to see whether we feel the same when we come back to it in two years' time. <laughs> 2027. <laughs> yes. Because we'll be back two, together yeah. by then. You keep saying two, I keep saying four. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on how much content we get in the meantime. We are going to run out of albums fairly soon, so so uh, so yeah. We'll uh, let you know our thoughts when we return for face the full episode in <laughs> many months' time. <laughs> face the full episode. And in the meantime, please do get in touch. Where can they get in touch, Natasha? You can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, or Twitter at Generation BTS underscore. Or YouTube is just at Generation BTS, or email us at Generation BTS or the albums at gmail.com. Yeah, give us a rating on Spotify or iTunes if you feel that way inclined, and come back for our next episode, which I believe will be You Never Walk Alone, and very excitingly, also the original soundtracks. Yeah, the OST. it's exciting. You've not told them that actually. I have. Just at the end of the. Oh, yeah, so because we spun in wings, we did You Never Walk Alone. Yeah. And there's only what? four songs on there we've brought in some of the osts it is an absolute shocker of an episode <laughs> like it's literally a hot take after hot take wall like to wall. Yes, generation <laughs> gaps are visible no <laughs> mammoth anyway yeah join us for that because you'll be like great. that yeah. yeah yeah i think we'll call it there for face <laughs> Get out of our faces. You Get out of our faces, Jimmy. <laughs> I think all I have to say at this point is I've been Christine. I've been Leanne. And I've been Natasha. And we have been Generation, Generation BTS. BTS. <laughs> <laughs>